I've been very fortunate to have met a lot of First Peoples right across this country and across the world. And the one thing that we have in common in terms of our worldly view is that there's no separation between land and sea. The sea country is um, very significant to the traditional owners of this area for their turtles and dugongs, for the reef. The sea turtle, that's my mum's totem. My mum's from um, Tanner Island in Vanuatu and that's her totem is the sea turtle and that's my, I love turtles and that's why I look after them. On the full moon the males sing in the mangrove. The male crocodiles sing to the moon. In the past a lot of the women, mainly it was women's job to go and collect eggs and steal eggs from the female crocodile's nest. And that's how we kind of control the numbers. I think my earliest memories of Umber Reef was probably around this island when um, they used to have school camps on um, Guild Island here and there where we're standing. And um, there used to be, a, well, there are still little coral reefs around the island. And I think that was my first introduction to, to the reefs. particular tribes that may have an Aboriginal language name that may, may connect to the Great Barrier Reef. If it's not there, that's loss of identity as an Aboriginal person and who they are and where they come from. My favourite animal at the moment uh, that calls the reef home is probably the green sea turtle. Especially after cyclone and the RC, their the numbers sort of were um, decimated really. If you look at the reef millions of years ago, now that they're finding artefacts around the different reefs around Australia, because in the early days that was part of our land. Nature indicates to us if something's not right. Around here all the water goes out to the sea. We've had stories in the past of people wanting to pipe water and send it away but it would change the rainforest and it would change the ocean around here because we have a lot of fresh water running into the sea. When you're looking at protecting the reef and sea country, you also got to look at the land because what comes off the land goes into the water and you've got to look at the water quality that gets out to the reef because some areas the water quality could destroy reefs. You know, you've got the crown of thorns um, that, are, uh, that are coming back in large numbers. Why are they coming back? Because bleaches, coral bleaches, all that stuff. But it's also that a lot of our fish intake, there's a lot of, um, a lot of fish being taken away from the, from the reef areas. You know, you get ghost nets and the turtles and that get tangled up in the ghost nets. They eat the plastics, fishing lines, they get tangled up in the fishing lines. When we see this stuff, it's heartbreaking. It makes me angry and it makes it traditional owners angry. Take your rubbish home. Taking it personally for me, it's just because of the importance that, that, that it has to us as a people. Not only us as Aboriginal people, but the wider community as well. Any part of losing country it's devastating to Aboriginal people because that's the intimate link for us. It's who we are and where we come from. There's an old saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. In my point of view, when it comes to saltwater country, you can't see the ocean for the reefs. Don't get me wrong, the Great Barrier Reef is such an iconic and symbolic natural wonder of this world. But in saying that, the elephant in the room when it comes to saving the Great Barrier Reef is obviously 
what's our solutions to fix up the oceans. Um, as First Peoples right across the planet, we have a deep, rich and meaningful understanding of how land and sea um, act together in the story of humanity.